filed a lawsuit down in uh, Alabama where, uh, what's his name, the uh, president of uh, Russia, Tim Turner. Yeah, the magistrate, I, I filed a lawsuit down there. And it's funny, the magistrate who's doing my case is also doing uh, Tim Turner's case. Just just odd coincidence that his name is uh, Wallace Capel Jr. And he's the one who's denying everybody's uh, right of, writ of habeas corpus trying to get Tim out of there. So uh, I filed some interesting paperwork down there on my own behalf, not on uh, Mr. President um, Tim Turner's behalf, but on my own behalf because I'm suing uh, um, a federal agent and a state agency down there. So uh, obviously, you know, uh, I'm doing a common law method, so they tried to drag me over to the complaint side of the court. They tried to drag me over to the Title 42 section of the court. And I said, no, I'll accept the uh, Title 28 section of the court. Uh-huh. I'll, accept the, I'll accept the 1332, which is just diversity of parties. That I'll accept, but I'm not going to file a Title 42 complaint because I'm not a uh, public welfare. I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a, you know, black. And it, it, it pertains to uh, race issues, you know, uh, civil rights issues. I said, uh, that, that's not my claim. So uh, they, they, kept, they kept forcing me into the complaint side of the court. So I told them on uh, December 31st, you better kill my case. You better, you know, you better uh, uh, end that thing now before you interfere with my rights. And the person that I'm suing, you're going to interfere with their rights because they're going to be trying to answer a complaint when they should really be answering a, a claim. So they did. So they, uh, they killed the case. So then I'm saying to them, okay, now that the other party didn't answer to the claim within 21 days, I want the clerk of the court to sign a paperwork stamp it and, uh, you know, press it upon the record that the other side failed to appear and they failed to answer. So I got a default judgment. So they're having a little bit of an issue. So with me demanding that, so what they did is they said to the U.S. Marshal Service is that I'm having inappropriate contact with the court. Yeah, because they sure don't like somebody telling them, you know, now do your job. So uh, the U.S. Marshals were looking for me, and they couldn't find me. So I live up here in the mountains. You ain't going to find me unless I want you to find me. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So they went to my sister's school because she um, – you know, she's a school teacher, so they pulled her out of class like on uh, like a Thursday or Friday, and then they pulled her out of class again like on a Monday or Tuesday. And they're like, look, we're just going to keep pulling you out of class until somebody in your family tells us where he is. We just want to talk to him. <clears throat> we just want him to explain to us what's this paperwork. You know, they're having a little bit of a, you know, anytime they see Freeman in Montana, common law and paper coming down, they get a little nervous. So, uh, yeah, because it's going to blow the whole game. But the marshal service doesn't know that. They just look, say, look, we're just doing what the court tells us to do. So uh, I'm, I said to them, I said, look, I'll come down to you. I don't want you coming up here to me. I don't want you hurting any of these animals. I don't want anything going wrong. You know, I said, um, you know, I don't, I, they don't need the stress. My neighbors don't need the stress. I said, I'll, I'll come on in. Just I'll be there on Wednesday. So I got there a little late, but I showed up. And uh, me and my sister, it's funny, we're sitting in the lobby. I said, holy cow, if they try to arraign me, it's going to be the longest arraignment in U.S. history because they're never going to get a contract with me. So I'm just going to keep saying to them, you know, what's the nature of the person whom you seek and, you know, do you have a claim? And I, may I settle a claim at this point? You know, is this, there an outstanding debt that I'm, that's due? Oh, it's going to be ridiculous. Me and my sister were just laughing. You know, like the pity the poor arraignment guy. Because I know what a code is, and I know the difference between public law and act and a code. So they say, when you're in violation of this code, I was like, who wrote the code? it would be like, what do you mean, who wrote the code? It's like, uh, it was written by a publishing company called Thompson's out of Canada. They go up and they took a look at the public law that's in the Library of Congress. They unroll the parchment paper and they decipher it and they read it and they interpret it and they make U.S. code. I said, that's all a code is. It's, a, it's a, the codification of the public law written by a Canadian publishing company. They can't be held liable if they make a mistake of the code. So you want me to answer to a code that some Canadian company interpreted as what is our true public law? May I see the public law? And they say, no, that's only available if you go to the Library of Congress. They ask them, they'll pull it out of the vault, and they'll unroll it for you. You can read it. I said, right. So nobody has a true copy of the public law on any record in this country, do they? No. Okay, well, what law did I break? Well, code uh, 18. Code, Code what code? The Canadian company is interpreting the code. It's not law. It's some silly code that Thompson's, the publishing company, is interpreting for us. What we do, you know. And if they're wrong, can I hold them liable? Well, no. They're in Canada. You're only going to go sue in Canada because you believed in the code. So anyway, when the marshals brought us in and brought me into the back to talk to them, they were they were they were straight up. I was waiting for about ten guys to jump me. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. like, I was waiting, and uh, they didn't do that. They uh, just sat down in the room. They started talking to me. 
And uh, they started to read to me uh, what they're going to do. And it's like, uh, well, you know, we're the marshal service and we protect the courts and we protect the judges and uh, we believe that you have an inappropriate. And then I started reading what he was saying. And he was like, where are you reading that from? I said, I downloaded it off your website, you know, before I got here today. And you're going to OP me now, right? He's like, well, yeah. I mean, it's like an operational procedure investigation. I said, right, you're going to OP me. So he's like, well, you already know what we can and can't do to you? I said, absolutely. <laughs> I said, I don't know what you can ask, what you can't ask. I said, so far away. So he said, well, we were going to record this. I said, he said, well, you said you record everything with the clerk of the court's office. I said, yeah, I got about 30 calls that I made down to there over the past two months. So I said, yeah, I got plenty of phone calls I recorded. And I was sweet in a part of them because I knew I was recording them. And I knew one day they'd try to say I was threatening them. That's why I recorded everything. I said, here's the CD. So it was so funny. They said to me, you record me. If you, if you, you can record us if you wish, but uh, we're going to record you. I said, yeah, that's fine. I don't care. I said, but I don't feel the need to record you. And he's like, well, why not? I said, because you're a man and you're a man. And he's like, what? I said, you're not. I said, uh, I said look, if you're going to say something and I don't like, I'm going to tell you, 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 you went too far. You, 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 you ain't, can't ask me that. And if I say something you don't like, you know what? If you don't like it, I'm going to say it anyway. And I said, if we got to rearrange the furniture and we gotta, uh, we're going to slug it out here in this room, we're going to slug it out, man to man. I said, I'm not worried about you guys. You guys are men. And I said, if you want to do a Nancy, a Nancy boy complaint against me, and uh, you know, and say that I, you know, we got into a fight in this room, I said, I'll go call you a bunch of Nancy boys. I said, you know, uh, I walk out of this room with a bunch of uh, teeth in my hand. Oh well. I said, but you're a man and I'm a man. We're, we're going to speak man to man. I said, if there was a woman in this room, oh, you betcha I'd be video recording this thing with about 10 video cameras because the women have a way to misconstrue and twist everything I say. So I'm not worried about you men. So they just talked to me for a little bit more, and they said, you know what? They shut the recorder off. They said, fuck tape recording you. You're all right. We like you. you. You know, you're straight up. I said, you're damn right I'm straight up. They said, how are you going to do this next? Well, what's the next step? I said, my next step is I want to demand the oaths of office of everybody who works in that who's touching my claim, and they're going to have to produce their oaths of office. And then I'm going to, you know, if they don't produce the oath of office, I said, that's going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's a private corporation I'm dealing with called the United States, that I'm not in a federal court. They said, well, what makes you think you're in a federal court? I said, look, look at the uscourt.gov website. What does the very first sentence say? And I printed it out, nice blue ink with the eagle of the America on there, the United States seal on it. I said, look, I just pulled it off the website today. It says right there, the first sentence, federal courts. All federal courts are Article Three courts under the Constitution. I said, that's where I believe I'm at. Where did I find that from? You go to the website, the very first page, the very first sentence. What does it say? Federal courts. All federal courts are Article Three courts under the Constitution. And I said, I'm going to hold you to it. And then I said to them, I said, then now scroll down to state courts. What's the very first sentence on state courts? All state courts are common law courts. I said, I'm going to hold you to it. I said, roll down a little bit further. Again, the characteristics of a federal court. What's the characteristic of a federal court? A court of record. I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> and then I said, what's a court of record? And I said, look at Black's Law Dictionary. A court of record only, 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 only moves under the common law. I said, I'm going to hold you to it. I said, yes. I said to him, here's a map of the world. I said, you see all the blue countries? Those are all code countries, all civil code countries. You see the orange? There's only five of them left in the country, on a planet. And we're one of them. I'm going to hold you to it. Well, hey, you know what? We're, we've gone through two hours. Um, Get, take my number and give me a call. Also, I think I'm going to try one more thing here. Let me see if that's Steve. Steve, is that you in Central Florida? It's me. Hey, I want to introduce you. I, and, and please do call me. Let me give you my number before I do that, and I want to introduce Steve here. Um, give me a call, uh, KL. Yeah. Uh-huh. My number is 559-291-6188. Yeah, type it in the chat board. I did already. I'll do it again. Uh, but I appreciate it because I want to talk to you more. Maybe we'll have you on. Uh, anyway. I got my friend uh, Steve here from Florida. This is uh, Rico Man, and he's got some phenomenal stories. Uh, Zeke, this guy is right up your alley, and he gives a lot of uh, attributes to, uh, to 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 Dave Merlin. Um, anyway, Steve, this is Zeke. Zeke, this is Steve. Hey, Zeke. Right. Hey, Steve. Nice to meet you. Yeah, that's why I was chatting with you on Scout saying it's nice to hear you got somebody here talking, telling people to read the damn law books. It's not that difficult. Yeah. Yeah, and they're, and they're listening to me. The marshals actually listened, and they watched, and they said, this is beautiful. Like, you can do whatever you want now, because we just had to uh, make sure that you weren't doing anything nutty, like any free man of Montana. I said, look, I was guilty of that free man of Montana nonsense a couple of years ago. 
I wrote lawsuits that were hundreds of pages long. Mm. I said, read my, I said to the U.S. Marshals, read my lawsuit. And they said, oh, we ain't got time. I said, read it. It's one page. And I read it. I said, holy cow, it's one page. I said, who's the defendant? He says, uh, it's a federal agent, a state agency, and it's under the control of the United States District Court in which you have the claim before now. So there you go. Anyway, Zeke, what, uh, what Steve has done back there is he's gotten people, his big one was he got $125,000 or $135,000 out of him when they snatched one of his friend's car out of their own carport after they told him he, he couldn't do that. And he, they gladly saddled out of court for $125,000 or thirty-five grand. That's one. Plus, he's managed to pull all his properties, as I understand it, out of the tax doles or the property tax. So, oh, nice. just, yeah, just going in and, and doing the research and going to the uh, tax assessor and says, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. And uh, they walked away with their, you know, tail between the legs going, uh, no more taxes for you, you you win. So, wow. anyway, that's my buddy Steve. So, All right, good job, Steve. I thought you'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, the web page. Zeke, give out your information one more time. Steve, if you're going to be up for a while, I'll call you. Uh, give out your information before I shut her down for the night because uh, I got me a roast pork in here to eat plus uh, have some hash oil. No, I didn't say that. Anyway, uh, before I shut her down, go ahead and give any information that you can. Okay, powerpolitics.com. Well, oh, that was just too easy. And that's plural, powerpolitics.com. Yeah. And uh, K L yeah. my information out there on the web again for you. So. Oh. Yeah, my, people just uh, email me. I don't know. Uh, and then what I do is I just mess, I, like I, when I send out an email, if you if you ask me a question, you're going to see there's about two, 300 people I mess email the same answer out at the same time because most people have basically the same question all the time. So okay. Right. Right. I, How do you get on the list? Yeah, so my name is just KLDirectTV with the number two at gmail.com. I'll type it on a board there for you folks. KLDirectTV number two. Oh, I had somebody ask me a really good question just a little while ago. I mean, some man asked me a great question. He says, um, I looked at your thing on PACER, and it says the case is closed. He says, is there something going on under the table that we can't see on PACER? I said, bingo. I said, how did you uh -huh. figure that out? I said, because normal people just read PACER, and they just read what they see on PACER, uh -huh. and they believe it. I said, do you understand that when you file a claim, you're not going to see a claim on PACER. You're going to see complaints. You're not going to see the common law process on PACER. And some man asked me that. I was like, holy cow, did I, I said, you know, how do you know that? You know, he must be going through the same nonsense because, like I said, you, they made like three or four orders from me, and I responded back in the common law. Now, you don't see my responses to their orders on PACER. You just see their three orders. 